Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how to process the proton NMR spectra that you collected on your unknown samples last week. And by now you should already have uh, the MNOVA software installed on your computer. You should already have the license file downloaded and installed into the MNOVA software. And you should already have accepted my invitation to the shared box drive uh, where your NMR data is stored. So now just go ahead and op open up MNOVA. And it's going to take a while for it to open up. Um, I don't know why. It just always takes a long time. All right, now that your MNOVA software is open, sometimes some of you might be getting this error message. Uh, just select the I've read the above information and click OK. Hopefully that doesn't hamper your ability to actually use <laughs> this software. So now that your MNOVA is opened up, um, you're going to go to File, Open. And if you already have installed the box drive, or sorry, if you've already installed the box app on your desktop, then the box file structure is going to be integrated into your file structure on the computer. So then you're just going to select the chem instrument data and, um, or if you only have access to the uh, top spin and the FTIR separately, then just select the top spin data, then go to data, then go to chem370l and select NMR. And now uh, find whatever file you put in there, whatever file you stored. So it should be, uh, I think I most of you saved it as your initials, sample number, and section number. Uh, I'm just going to choose the latest one. So I'm just going to sort them by date. And I'm literally just going to pick uh, the latest one as an example. So double click on the sample name double click on this 10 folder and then look for the FID file. This FID file is the one that's going to contain your NMR information. So select it and either double click it or press open. Aha, here it is. And this is a very nice spectrum, but there are a couple of things that we need to do first before we uh, kind of start zooming in and picking the peaks and integrating and all that good stuff. So in your MNOVA software, navigate to this processing tab under NMR. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to do auto phase correction. And then you're going to select auto baseline correction. So this kind of evens the peaks out a little bit and brings the baseline kind of to a more flat um, line. So once you've done that, then the next thing to do is to calibrate our spectrum. Because remember I was saying oftentimes people will put this TMS molecule in there as a zero for calibration. We didn't put that in there to our sample, but inst instead we have a little bit of proton containing chloroform and we're gonna use that signal as our uh, reference for the NMR spectrum. So that peak is gonna show up around 7.26, uh, but it might be a little bit off. And in the seven PPM region, the only peak that you're seeing is just this one peak. So that's almost certainly gonna be your chloroform signal. And now we need to put that signal at 7.26 ppm. And to do that, we're going to come over here to analysis under the NMR tab. And we're going to select the reference button. And another way to do this is to press the L key on your keyboard. And that will also bring you to the same function. So press on the reference, then come over here and uh, you'll see that it find, the software finds the peak. And it says that it's at 7.28. And that's the peak that we're looking for. So go ahead and just click on that, <clears throat> just a normal left click. And now you're going to come over here and uh, to the new shift box and you're going to type in 7.26 So delete the old number and type in 7.26, press OK. And now our spectrum is going to be nicely calibrated to whatever it's supposed to be. All right, so next we have to pick the peaks. So we have to find where are these peaks located? Uh, what are their chemical shift values? So to do that, we are going to go over to the auto peak picking button and press on it. And notice that it picks all of the peaks and it also found some of these solvent impurities. So it found the CDCL3 and it colored it red. And it also found a little bit of water at 1.56 and it colored that peak red as well. So that's kind of a nice feature about this MNOA software. All right, so the next thing we gotta do is we have to actually uh, look at where the peaks are and integrate them. So let's go ahead and zoom in on the peaks. And to zoom in, you could go to view, you could go to press the zoom in button, or alternatively, just press Z on your keyboard, and it does the same thing. So I'm just going to zoom into this region here for now, and see how it's looking like that's looking very nice. 
All right, so the next thing to do is to integrate each of the peaks that correspond to your actual sample. So because MNOVA says that this peak is H2O, it's probably not going to be part of our compound, but I might integrate it anyway just to confirm. So if it is part of our compound, then the integrations are going to work out to something sensible. If it's not part of our compound, then the integration is going to be something totally random and not match with the rest of the integrations. Yeah, but don't rely on this because sometimes that actually can be a peak that's part of your compound. So kind of make sure that you have multiple data that corroborates your final structure at the end. All right, so next thing to do is to start integrating. And I like to kind of zoom in a little bit closer when I want to integrate. So again, either you can press the Z button to get there, but if it's already selected like it is right now, you can see that the cursor is the zoom button. So just go ahead and click and drag on whatever peak you want. And this is a very beautiful quartet. So uh, now let's just go ahead and integrate it. All right, and to integrate, you're gonna go to the analysis sub tab on the NMR tab here. And you could either do auto integration. I kind of like to just do things myself. So I'm just gonna integrate manually. And to integrate manually, it's the, the smaller button right here. Right? And another way to get to this manual integration tool is to just press I on your keyboard. And that switches over to the manual integration tool. You can see that the icon is now an integral symbol. So just go ahead and click and drag and try to get the entirety of your peak into that integral, into that area that you select by clicking and dragging. And it automatically is going to integrate your first selected peak. Your first integrated peak is going to be automatically set to one. And then you could kind of play around with the numbers if they don't make sense. So after you integrated the first one, you need to integrate the rest. And in order for you to kind of get to the rest of the peaks, you can again go to view and you can do a couple of things. You could either press this uh, pan button and sort of start manually dragging your spectrum. You can press the um, this full spectrum button or you could just press the letter F on your keyboard and that zooms you out all the way. And the way that I typically like to do it, I like to just pr use the keyboard as much as I can. So if I'm just moving between peaks, I'll just like press F to zoom out completely. And then I'll press uh, Z in order to start zooming in again. So I'm just going to press Z on my keyboard and then start zooming in on the other peaks. And the two peaks that should be corresponding to our compound will be this one and this one. And the software told us that this is water, but we're going to try integrating it anyway and see uh, what comes out of it. All right. So if you want, you could keep zooming in in order to get like a really nice, uh, idea of where you should start and stop integrating. And once you've zoomed in enough that you, you feel like you have a good view of your peak, press I on your keyboard or select the integral um, button, click and drag. And notice that it integrates to 1.52. So that's like roughly one and a half. And I'll tell you what to do with that in a second. So for now, I'm just going to zoom in or zoom out and integrate the rest. So I'm going to zoom, zoom out, then zoom in on the other peaks. And for now, I'm just going to come over here to this triplet. I'm going to press I in order to zoom in and uh, in order to integrate, sorry. And this one integrates to 1.52 as well. Okay, so I'm going to, again, zoom out and I'm going to zoom in to this peak that it said is our uh, a water peak. And I'm going to try integrating as well, just in case, just in case. And that comes out to also like one and a half, one and a half. So I don't know, it might be water, it might be not water, and it might actually be part of your compound because the integration of that one is comparable to what the other ones are integrating to. So um, I would say like, don't trust the water label too much and use your other data, use your IR data, use the molecular formula data in order to determine whether this peak is a throwaway peak or whether that's actually part of your compound. All right, so I'm going to zoom out and I'll show you um, how to scale the integrals in, in, in a bit. Um, another thing that I want to mention is that you don't need to integrate the CDCL3, right? Because it's not part of your compound. It's just a solvent. And that for sure we know is a solvent. So you don't need to integrate that at all, right? Okay, now notice that the peaks that uh, we integrated last, integrate to 1.5. So about around one and a half compared to our first peak that we integrated. So that's not really reasonable. You can't have half of a proton, right? So what that means is that you need to scale that number by two. 
So let's go ahead and zoom into some of these peaks. So again, I'm going to press Z on the keyboard, and we're going to zoom in. Uh, and maybe we'll just uh, select uh, the triplet on the right. And again, I'm going to switch over to the integral function by pressing I on the keyboard. And I'm going to hover over this integral. So I'm going to hover right here, where, right where that little line begins and right where it turns red. And once it looks like that, I'm going to right click with my mouse and I'm going to select edit integral. And once the edit integral box comes up, you are going to come over here to the normalized box. And instead of 1.52, you're going to double that number and instead write three and then press enter. And once you do that, notice that the other peak that was also integrating to 1.52 now integrates to about three as well. And if you zoom out and go back to our initial peak that we integrated and let's just zoom in on it, it integrates to about two. So this, I would say, is the more correct ratio than what we had in the beginning because it's incorrect to have one and a half protons. There are no half protons. Everything is one, right? Like they just, they all come in a quantity of one, not half of a proton. Okay, cool. So this is pretty much it. And in order for you to show me your data, I would say you could just not even show me the CDCL3 peak. You could just zoom in on where your data actually is. So just zoom in kind of between four, four and a half ppm and one ppm. Maybe you can like do a little bit of a tighter crop here. All right, another trick that you could do is you could cut out this flat space. So whenever you have just a bunch of this dead space where there's no peaks at all, you could just remove it with the scissor icon in the view tab right here. So just go ahead and select that and cut it out like this. But make sure that you never cut out any peaks. Even if they're solving peaks, don't cut them out like that with scissors, right? And uh, now that's looking pretty good. So if this is how you showed me your NMR spectrum, I would be pretty happy. And I, I like to do maybe a little bit more of a tighter crop on these peaks as well. So I'm just going to go to the zoom button again, or I'm just going to press Z on my keyboard and zoom in just a tiny bit more. And now you can very clearly see that you have a quartet, you have a singlet, you have another singlet that was labeled by the software as water, but you always have to make sure whether that's true or not. And you also have a uh, triplet at 1.26 ppm. All right, and now the way that you're going to put this into your lab report is you're literally just going to copy and paste it into your Word document. So press Control C. So when you're on this window, when you're on your the window with your sample on it, press Control C on your keyboard. Go to your Word document and press Control V, and that should paste your spectrum. And this would be good enough for me if you were to show it to me like that. But if you really wanted to like zoom in and talk about the specific peaks, or if all of your peaks are just too spread out and there's no way for you to show them all like nicely uh, in just one spectrum, then you might want to do a couple of separate crops of your spectrum and then paste them separately into your Word document. All right, so that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope this will be easy for all of you. And if not, then um, we'll discuss this more uh, in lab next week as we keep learning more chemistry. All right, well, enjoy processing your NMR spectra, and I, I'll see you next week.